About a year ago, my brother Josiah and I decided to make a trip to Egypt where I was studying Moses and the Exodus. I wrote this book, The Quest for the Historical Moses. I'm trying to do some follow-up material on that and also do a documentary about Moses and the Exodus. And one of the things we did is we went to the Serapium. And this is very interesting. Uh, we went to the pyramids at Saqqara. Now, everybody knows about the Great Pyramids in Giza, which is right outside of Cairo. Actually, this time we went to Egypt, uh, we, we stayed at a hotel where you look out our, our window and there were the three Great Pyramids. Uh, but there's also pyramids not terribly far away uh, at Saqqara. And these are older pyramids, and uh, including the, the Step Pyramids. But not too far away from the pyramids of Saqqara is the Serapium. And this is believed to have been the place where they, uh, they mummified bulls. Now, I think there's a connection between this and the story of the golden calf. The Hebrew should actually be interpreted, because we think of a calf, we think of a, a newborn baby bull. But a better translation would probably be a young bull. So this could be uh, a young, fully grown bull. So Egyptians had two of these sacred bulls. You had the Menevis bull and you had the Apis bull. And this was a, uh, viewed as an incarnation of gods, of uh, Osiris or Ra. And they would take these bulls and uh, they would choose one of these bulls as the incarnation of one of these gods soon after his birth. And then it would, this, this bull would, would live as if it was a king, and it was viewed as the incarnation of a deity. And then when it died, uh, they would find a new bull to replace it, and they would take that bull that had died, and they would mummify it as if it was a pharaoh. And in Serapium, we have, uh, there are dozens of these bulls over the centuries uh, when they kept this practice. Uh, and they're in these huge stone sarcophagus. Some people believe that maybe these aren't sarcophagus for, for the bulls. Maybe these are the tombs of the Nephilim. Uh, the story we find in the book of Genesis and the book of Enoch about the Nephilim. These gigantic uh, beings which are like demigods. But be that as it may, I believe that in antiquity, uh, most of these sarcophagi were raided. And I think there's only uh, three or four of these sarcophagus containing the undisturbed mummy uh, of the, the, the bulls, the sacred bulls they had. So obviously there is a connection uh, between the, the, the Serapium and the, the Apis bull and the Menevis bull and the golden calf story. So God is viewed, El, uh, which is the name of God in the scriptures, but it's also in Canaanite mythology, El is the creator God, and his name just means God, but in some ways there's similarity to God as we conceive of him, and in some ways there's some big differences. But a bull was used as a symbol of, of, of Ra and uh, Osiris, uh, but also of El, and later on of, of Baal and other of these Egyptian and Canaanite gods. Because a bull represents strength and virility. And uh, so that's why they use that symbol for their deity. Now, Aaron built, you know, the, the golden bull. I think they found in uh, the Gaza Strip, they found a silver bull, which would be really equivalent uh, to what we found described in the Bible. But Aaron built this, and of course Moses comes down, he's appalled, and the golden calf is destroyed. But later on, Jeroboam, who breaks away from the kingdom, of, uh, he breaks the kingdom of Israel in two, and you have the kingdom of Judah in the south, the kingdom of Israel in the north, and Jeroboam builds two idols with golden calves, and says th these are the gods, the Elohim, which uh, Elohim is a plural world word, which is used for Yahweh, which is used for God several times. There's two divine names in the scriptures, El or Elohim and Yahweh. And Elohim is a plural word, but it's used, even though it's plural, it's used singular to refer to God. 
but literally it could be translated as gods. And in certain places, the word Elohim does refer to pagan gods in the plural. So Jeroboam builds two golden calves, one in Bethel. And Bethel is important because this is the place where, uh, where Jacob saw the, the ladder to heaven. And then you have the city of Dan. And uh, so the idea probably is that these, these golden calves were pedestals. And Yahweh is standing over the land of Israel with one foot in the, the southern area in Bethel. And then there's other foot, you know, on, standing on this, this golden calf in Dan. I've been to Dan uh, up in, in, in northern Israel. Uh, I think that we have the general idea where Bethel was, but there's been a lot of destruction, so there's a dispute about that. But obviously, Bethel, which means house of God, and they would have sacred stones called the Bethelists, and uh, they're like the, the Shiva Linga seen in the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom movie. So Jacob had the stone, and he put it behind his head, used it as a pillow, and he had this vision of, of, of the divine. So he, or the scripture is very specific about this. He erected an altar and he placed the sacred stone there, which was venerated for, for a long time until, of course, it disappeared from history. But Jeroboam, this place is already connected to the patriarchs and to a vision of, of God the patriarchs had, Jacob in particular. So uh, Jeroboam is trying to do a religious revival, uh, paganizing religion as well from his, his point of view. Uh, religious reforms. So Aaron used the golden calf or golden bull as a symbol of Yahweh. So he was going to do it, and he's created these these uh, uh, these golden calves. Now, I believe it's Amos and other scriptures talk about how these golden calves were there, and some Israelites actually viewed uh, these golden calves as an embodiment of, of El. Uh, that somehow, you know, even this pedestal as well, but somehow the, the power uh, of, of Yahweh, or of El in this case, infused this golden calf. And this, this was deeply entrenched uh, in the Israelite community. And notice that a reformer, I mean, a, a revivalist like Jehu, Jehu's like, we're going to get rid of the worship of Baal and the pagan gods, and Jehu is going to promote the worship of Yahweh. But Jehu was afraid to take down the two golden calves. As courageous as he was in destroying Baal worship, he, he, he was afraid to take down the golden calves and, and, and El and Bethel. So he didn't. He left those. Apparently he didn't participate in that because he's a zealous worshiper of Yahweh. But even though he just destroyed the worshipers of Baal, uh, Jehu, as bold as he was, was afraid to take on the deeply entrenched practices of the golden calves found in in, uh, in Tell Dan, which is uh, in northern Israel today, and also in Bethel. Now, interestingly, the high place built by King Jehu is still there. Of course, the golden calf was uh, gold in ancient times had a high mortality rate because gold had, has a intrinsic value. So it doesn't matter what it was carved into, especially when there's economic uh, deprivations and hard times. They would take the gold and melt it, and put it into circulation, or, or you know, in times of national emergency. Join us next time as we continue to explore the Serapium, the Golden Calf, and the history behind the story of Moses and the Exodus.